Good afternoon. We're here with Dr. Perkins today uh, at the IBBA office in San Antonio and uh, really enjoy uh, this time we have to visit with them. Doc, what are some of the things that's on the radar with the members? What are some of the things that they've been calling about lately? Well, certainly we've been getting lots of phone calls about the new EPDs and, and they're online now, uh, uploaded and, uh, you know, they take a while to get all straightened out, but everything's in order. The percentile rankings are good. So uh, that's probably been number one. Number two, there's been a lot on genetic defects. Uh, now, when we're talking about genetic de defects, are we talking about anything in particular? The, the biggest one we're concerned about is the developmental duplication. I have several questions about this, but mm -hmm. let, let's, let's all back up for one second here. If you could explain to us mm -hmm. exactly what is developmental duplication and, and how does it impact our, our cow herd? It is what it says. So you may see that an animal has extra legs, may have two heads, uh, may have extra skin flaps. There's a lot of things that, that you can visibly see the problem is there's a lot of things that you can't see. There are animals out there that are homozygous recessive for this condition, which means that they've got both bad copies of the gene that look normal. You can't see anything wrong with them. They're productive, productive they're functional. Uh, so the impact that, you know, I can go out there and look at my herd and say, this one has this, one, is not necessarily true. Uh, so it's not one of those that, that phenotypically you can always see. What are we certain. seeing um, are, um, as far as do all the breeders have to test all the animals? Does the entire herd book need to be tested? Let's take okay. us through step you by bet. step what needs to happen. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And no, not all animals have to be tested. Uh, a certain percentage of our population are going to be animals that, that need to be tested, certainly. Uh, and if you go back to the initial uh, problem that we have, it goes back to a bull called, uh, I believe his name is Ken Carl Mr. Angus. Uh, if he's in, in a pedigree, uh, that you have, then you've got potentially an issue uh, that might need to be taken care of. Uh, but at this point, I, I'm sure asking producers to slow down. Don't go spend a lot of money right now. Let's let some of these older historic animals get tested, and they may clean up some of these pedigrees so you don't have to actually test them. Uh, so save your money right now. Just hold on just a little bit, and, and, and we'll know more as time goes along whether you should or should not test for it. Are we waiting for the results to come back so then we can go through and, and let it filter down through the system? Yeah. No, that, that's a, another great, great question. Probably what, what I'd recommend if you have AI sires or donor dams and they have known impacted genetics for this condition, such as example, they have BR New Design 036 in their pedigree, they need to be tested, okay? Because they're what we call impacted genetics, they need to be tested. Uh, but again, I caution on some of those. Some of those AI sires are not going to have to be tested because uh, potentially a grand sire may have already been tested free and cleaned up that pedigree. Gotcha. So again, we've got to populate the older animals with actual results from a DNA test before you get too excited about moving forward. But uh, if you're concerned that it's hurting your semen cells, some of those kind of things, then I highly recommend you go ahead and get them tested. You know, that's a $21, $22 cost that may save you a lot of heartache between now and six, 10 months when we get all this in the system uh, that it doesn't impact your semen cells. So if I'm gonna be a progressive breeder, I'm probably going to go ahead and test that uh, as opposed to waiting if I'm trying, if it's hindering me from selling semen at this point. Dr. Perkins, a question I get all the time regarding developmental duplication mm -hmm. is, we know it has impacted the Black Angus side. Do the folks that breed red Angus cattle, do they need to have this on their radar as well? Great, great question. Um, again, it originated from a black Angus population. Uh, so unless you've got black genetics in your red population, you probably don't need to be concerned about this particular condition. Uh, but be, be aware that there are other genetic conditions out there that, that we will uh, be moving forward with in, in the future that do impact red Angus cattle. Uh, for example, osteopetrosis. Uh, or marble bone. Uh, so just because you have red cattle does not mean you're Im immune from these particular genetic conditions, just you may be immune from the developmental duplication uh, condition. Okay. So, How are they going to know when they look up their animal online what indicators will be on their page and what initials or acronyms will be there and what do those acronyms yeah. be regarding the genetic conditions? On the registration paper it is clearly going to indicate genetic conditions and we'll, if they're tested, it will have DDC if they're carriers, it'll have DDF if they're free, it'll have DDA if they actually are homozygous for both bad copies of that, 
and if they are not tested or anything, it's going to be blank. If they have a pedigree that's impacted by this condition and has not been tested, we're going to, they're going to get a DDPC, meaning potential carrier. What's the message that you would like to send to the breeders as, when it comes to developmental duplication? Yeah. Uh, again, first thing I'm going to say is slow down. Okay. Let, let's kind of let things work the way they need to work. Let's get some of these older animals into the population, whether they're clean, they're free, or they're homozygous for the condition. And, and as we move forward, you know, again, if it's impacting your cells of cattle, embryos, or semen, then you probably need to go ahead and test those animals and mm -hmm. just clear the record right there. Uh, however, if they're not asking for it or, or you don't have breeders that are concerned about it right now, again, I think you take your time and, and let's let this thing kind of, let the database kind of take care of itself. Because ultimately, I, I, I would prefer that we eliminate this condition from our population. Uh, you know, that may, well, could take us several years to do that, but, but ultimately, I would like to see that accomplished. And probably the most important thing is the board policy clearly states that you do not have to test for this genetic condition. It is not required for registration. It's not required if they're a PC animal. So the only time it's gonna be required is if it is an AI sire or a donor dam. That's the only two cases where it's required. But that being said, even if an AI sire test positive is a carrier, you can still use that semen made it to a population of cattle and still register those calves. So it does not prevent you from using the semen, selling the semen, purchasing the semen. It just says we want to know whether that, that ASR donor dam is a carrier or is clean the condition. That, that's all we're asking. But nothing is required uh, in terms of registry of these animals. If you've got any questions whatsoever, do not be afraid to call us here at the office. We, any one of us can talk to you about it. Uh, call our cell phones. You're not going to be any burden on us at all. We want to help you get through this and answer any questions you might have. So our lines of communication are open. We just need you to contact if you have a question.